Welcome to another ICS Impulse video. I'm Wendy Crumley Welsh, the Product Manager for ICS Impulse. Today we're going to be talking about the gaze test and spontaneous test in the ICS Impulse. So what is the gaze test? The gaze test, so this is gaze and spontaneous, provide the ability to assess for gaze and spontaneous nystagmus. The purpose of these two test types is to identify nystagmus that is evoked without stimulus by having the patient stare at certain positions. The patient is typically in a sitting position or in a caloric position. So the caloric position is the head inclined 30 degrees. First, let's talk about gaze. So gaze assesses the patient's eye movement when the eyes are fixated in different directions, typically left, right, up, down, and center. The person assessing the patient will provide the stimulus at which the patient is to stare. So the stimulus can be the tester's finger, an implement such as the tip of a pen or a bobby pen, or a laser light presented on the wall from a presentation remote. According to the ANSI standards, the eyes should be recorded for a minimum of 10 seconds with the eyes positioned at 30 degrees from center for left and right and 25 degrees from center for up and down. In order to assess for alternating or direction changing nystagmus, the eyes should be recorded for more than two minutes. So you need to record two minutes or longer if you're going to catch alternating or direction changing nystagmus. Please be aware that having the patient look further than the degrees stated above, the 30 degrees for right and left and 25 degrees for up and down, can result in endpoint nystagmus, which is not diagnostically relevant. So again, if you have the person looking way far off in one side and endpoint nystagmus occurs, that happens in normal people. So that again, that's not diagnostically relevant. So you want to make sure that you have them looking 30 degrees right, left, or 25 degrees up, down. Gaze tests may be performed with vision or with vision denied. And to learn about the vision denied solution, please see the vision denied video. So spontaneous. This test type assesses the patient's eye movement when the eyes are in the primary position looking straight ahead without any visual stimulus. According to the ANSI standard, the eyes should be recorded at a minimum of 20 seconds. The patient or patient's head may be in various positions such as sitting, supine, chin to chest, head extended backward. The spontaneous test may be performed with vision or with vision denied. So in this video, we're not going to go through the whole pupil detection, calibration, and vision denied solution. Those can be found in other videos that specifically talk about setting the pupil detection, calibrating the patient, and how to use the vision denied solution. We're only going to be talking about the gaze test. Regarding goggle placement, again, the goggles don't have to be as tight as they are for head impulse. Head impulse, we want to make sure that we don't have any goggle slippage, but when you're doing gaze, they don't need to be that tight for the patient. Eye video recording. If you have auto record on, which is shown down in this picture with the A call out by it, even if you use pupil location for re setting your region of interest or setting your threshold for your pupil, the video, eye, the eye video recording will always be in grayscale. You can choose to use head position feedback or synchronized room video for the gaze test. And why would you want to do that? Well, one thing is you want to make sure that when the person is doing gaze that they're truly just holding their head still and looking in the direction you want them to look in. You don't want them moving their head. Of course, if you're standing in front of them presenting your finger or um, using an implement, then obviously you're aware of whether the head's moving or not. But you can record that using the synchronized room video or using the head position feedback. And you can choose that option under test options, or you can choose to have none. The next thing I want to talk about real quickly is the external monitor and the presentation remote. So you can hook up an external monitor to your computer. Down here where it says external monitor, if you click this button here, you can actually throw the eye up onto that external monitor. Now when you're doing gaze, and it's calculating a slow phase velocity, a real-time slow phase velocity will also be presented on that external monitor. And then the presentation remote. So if you read in the manual, there are, um, gives you options for a presentation remote, Targus, Logitech, etc., the ones that we've tested out. And you can use that presentation remote 
not only to start stop the test if you're using head position feedback to center the head but you can also use the laser on the presentation remote and point on a wall and use that as a stimulus so performing the gaze test the first thing you need to do is come over to the navigation panel on the left and click gaze then here you see you have two options gaze and spontaneous under gaze you would choose whether you're doing vision or vision denied so if you were doing vision denied you would check that box if not you would leave it unchecked and then you choose which direction you're asking the patient to look left right up down or center for spontaneous Typically it's done with vision denied, so it's automatically checked for you. Now, remember that you need to calibrate beforehand, and you need to always calibrate without vision denied, obviously, and you want to make sure that box isn't checked. So if spontaneous is the first test you do, then you want to uncheck that box, go through the calibration, then put the vision denied solution on, and then run your spontaneous. So click spontaneous, choose vision denied, and then you have four options. Is the patient sitting, supine, is the head chin to chest, or is the head extended backward? So for that is the gaze test. So during data collection, first you wanna instruct the patient, tell them what you're gonna have them do. And then if you're using head position feedback, you're gonna center the head and then ask them to look left or right and then you can tell if the head's moving or not from the head position feedback. You're going to start your test and you can stop the test or you can set in test options the time that you want this test to run for and once it meets that time like 20 seconds or a couple of minutes um, then it'll automatically stop and go to analysis. So on the data collection Here's a trace here. The red is the horizontal, the purple is the vertical, and here's our SPV, uh, real-time SPV. So you'll see what the slow phase velocity of the eye movement is um, during the test. That slow phase velocity number is either in green or orange. Green means that it's reliable. Orange means it may not be quite reliable, that it's jumping around a lot. So you want to see that the eyes are moving typically and then the SPV is staying green. So if the person truly is staring in one direction and doing what they're instructed to do, chances are the SPV number will stay consistent and be green. So I'm going to show you now some data collected on a patient who has normal results. When the patient is looking downward you will need to remind them to have their eyes wide open because sometimes the eyelashes kind of cover the pupil a little bit, but if they open their eyes nice and wide, um, then you won't have that issue. So first we're going to do left. So we're going to ask the patient to look left. And again, since this patient is within normal limits, we don't see much in the trace. It's fair, pretty much a flat line. Once you're done collecting, you click stop. Now you choose the next position, so we choose right. ask the patient to look right. Again, no nystagmus, fairly flat trace. Then when we want the test to stop, we click stop. Again, you could set the test to only run 10 to 20 seconds and then have it automatically stop for you. Now we're going to ask the patient to look up. And again, no nystagmus. Now we're going to stop the test. Then we're going to ask, we're going to set it to down, and we're going to ask the patient to look down. Again, no nystagmus. So we're going to stop the test. Now note that regarding clicking that center button, you only have to do that if the head position feedback is on. So if you don't have that on, you do not need to center the head every time. And you can do that from your presentation remote. You don't always have to be clicking on the laptop. And last one, let's do center. So we're going to ask the patient to look straight ahead. And again, no nystagmus. And then we're going to click stop.
Okay. One thing I want to show you is once you're done with the test, you can play back the data and you can play back the trace as well as the eye, as well as the head position feedback or the synchronized room video all synchronized together. So you have a couple of options when playing back the trace. I could start, I could click the cursor over here and say I want to play from the cursor and it's going to play from this cursor to the end. Or if I don't have this box play from cursor checked, it's going to always play from the beginning. But wherever I click along here, notice that the it goes with the corresponding eye movement, the corresponding head movement, and also jumps to where the beat is. So the times are matched up. So let's click play, and I want to show you. So here, she's looking to the, she's actually looking center at this point. So see it says gaze center with vision. So she's looking straight ahead. So if you're wondering what this little blip is, it's actually a blink and you can see it in the eye video. If you want, if you go under test, let's go to left and we'll um, see the gaze left. So here's under test, we have left, right, up, down, and center, all the videos that we took. So if I hit playback or play button, she's looking left and you can see these little dips are an eye blink. And the eye blink happens in that vertical channel. Now let's say you saw horizontal nystagmus. You can always turn off the vertical trace and only look at the horizontal trace. One other thing to note is that you can also play this back at slow and slower speed. So let's actually go slower and let's hit play one more time so you can see, but you can play this back in slow motion. So if you did see something in that eye video that you think, oh, this is unique or interesting, then you can play it back in slow motion and really look at it. So right here we asked her to look left. Okay, so I think you get the point. This, this video, since there's no nystagmus, is not all that interesting, but the point being is you can play this back in slow motion. So if you did have nystagmus, and you can see we've got a little nystagmus going on up here, um, horizontal uh, left beating nystagmus, then you would have your beats here, and then down here you would have, if I was to click on a particular beat, I would have the the slow phase velocity for that beat, 19.9 degrees per second. It also gives me a little tool tip up here. That happened at 3.5 seconds, and then the vertical, it's around negative 0.2. And then the peak for this is around 21 degrees per second. So you can see in the trace the nystagmus, and then you have your beat graph down here. There's something happening in the horizontal trace, but no beats, see basically zero in the vertical trace. So you can see how all the little beats are lined up at zero. That's in your info screen. Just a couple of other things. It tells you the test type. So this was a gaze right with vision. It tells you the operator, the calibration, test date and time, time elapsed. The whole test took 44 seconds um, and the begin time. We talked about playback. So you can play back the eye. And so the eye the trace and either the head position feedback or the synchronized room cam will all be played back together and you can do that normal speed or slow motion. You can play back from the beginning or you can determine where along that trace you want to play back and play back from cursor. We just talked about test info so here you can see it a little bit bigger. You have the test type operator calibration, test time, elapsed time, the begin time which we will come back to and I'll show you that in software and then your a particular beat and then the peak. If you make any remarks in analysis um, you could come and you can type them in here along the test or if you click remarks you could type it under the remarks tab so if there's something that you want to say about that test um, then you can make remarks for that test and then those remarks could be printed on the report if you want those in there. So reanalysis. So let's go back to software real quick.
and let's say for example in this test this information right here where she was actually looking straight ahead and then moved left let's say I decided I didn't want this information to be included in the analysis down here in the uh, beat analysis so I can say reanalyze from cursor and if I do that then notice that it reanalyzed from where I had my cursor all of this beginning part is grayed out and now my beat graph is pretty much consistent there's no nystagmus there or I can say reanalyze from full trace and I still end up with this little bit of information right here so you can choose if some like for example you're doing I guess it's really important when you're doing positionals if you want if you have a movement of the head if you started the trace before you did the Dix Hall Pike and you have the head movement and you want to get that out of the analysis then you can set your cursor and set your begin time you can also come up and we could click on a beat here and say delete beat now notice I need to choose horizontal or vertical so that deleted the horizontal beat or I can restore that beat now if I wanted to delete a vertical beat like let's say this little guy right here then I would make sure that I'm on BR for vertical right and then I could delete that beat and I can restore that if I decide this peak is not where I want it I can choose a time and say select peak and actually I wanted to do that on the horizontal so I select the peak or I can click restore peak and that puts the peaks back to where the computer decided or the algorithm decided that they should be so you can reanalyze you can reset the peak you can delete beats and you can decide where along that trace you want analysis to start or if you want the full trace to be analyzed so one thing I wanted to point out is that when you have an existing patient in the system if they've had a gaze test or a spontaneous test any kind of ocular motor test you see here uh, is a file windy video up at the top there are four icons this little icon here with the man in the chair looking at the blue dot that's the ocular motor icon and so any ocular motor test gaze spontaneous VOR skew deviation um, will put a little check mark next to that patient file if they have uh, ocular motor data is saved okay let's talk about interpretation so a response within normal limits obviously is absence of nystagmus so there's no nystagmus beat in that response for gaze we're talking about a gaze test right now gaze and spontaneous it helps you decide whether the, the person has a peripheral or central disorder depending on the type direction and presence with or without fixation so gaze evoked nystagmus this is usually central in origin it's induced by eccentric gaze beating in the direction of the gaze so if you ask the person to look left and you've got left beating nystagmus that's gaze evoked nystagmus you ask them to look right they've got right beating nystagmus and it's usually absent with vision denied so it's present when you have fixation and it goes away when there's vision denied square wave jerks that's a central in origin these are trains of small horizontal saccades that move eyes away from the target and then return them within 200 milliseconds during attempted fixation and it's usually accompanied by a gait problem and you want to also make sure that if you see this you question the person how much caffeine they've had or it's also sometimes normal in elderly patients um, by the way I'd like to give Cameron Vereen credit because most of this information on interpretation um, is taken from his course his VNG course um, offered by Odometrics so if you want to learn more about gaze disorders um, Dr. Barine's course his VNG course is very useful a congenital nystagmus this is horizontal nystagmus which is usually intense and increasing with increasing slow phase velocity it usually increases with attempts to fixate and is reduced by convergence usually with congenital nystagmus these people have a null point that means you can find somewhere off center where you can ask them to look and the nystagmus will go away and typically they know where their null point is because they often use it when reading they will shift their gaze to the null point in order to be able to read a book etc and then it's usually present at birth and develops in infancy so it's something that they've always had and something that they've learned to live with doesn't bother them typically periodic alternating nystagmus again this is a central disorder 
And this is horizontal nystagmus that reverses direction at every two minutes. So again, if you think somebody's going to have a central disorder, you might want to record for more than two minutes to see if they do have direction changing or what's called periodic alternating nystagmus. And these people typically have conjugate eye movements. Vertical nystagmus is another central origin, a downbeat or upbeat nystagmus present with eyes open at center gaze, sometimes brought on by or made worse by lateral or downward gaze. And you sometimes will see this in the Dix Hall Pike maneuver. So gaze will help you determine whether the patient has a central disorder or not. Spontaneous, um, again, within normal limits is absence of nystagmus, or if they do have a little bit of nystagmus, it's less than six degrees per second. Spontaneous nystagmus is non-localizing, or typically we consider spontaneous nystagmus to be associated with peripheral disorders, such as vestibular neuritis. And this primary horizontal nystagmus, unaltered by changes in head position and suppressed by visual fixation. So at the beginning, when I talked about spontaneous nystagmus, I said that it can either be sitting supine, chin to chest, or head extended backwards. One thing when you're determining is this spontaneous nystagmus or not, again, it's unaltered by changes in the head position. So if you see spontaneous nystagmus in a sitting or supine position, and you put their chin to chest or their head extended back, and that nystagmus changes, it is not spontaneous. It's something central. So that's why those options are in the spontaneous drop down, sitting supine, chin to chest or head extended. So if you're questioning whether you truly have spontaneous nystagmus or not, and you do those four or a couple of them, and you notice that it does not change with the head position, then that's true spontaneous nystagmus. Um, spontaneous nystagmus, again, is suppressed by visual fixation. So when you're doing gaze, you shouldn't see any nystagmus. And then it's typically greater than six degrees per second with vision denied. So most of the time people will do their spontaneous nystagmus with the vision denied solution. So quickly, the difference between gaze evoked versus spontaneous. Unilateral gaze evoked nystagmus can be any intensity. Any amount of nystagmus is considered abnormal and it is absent with vision denied at center gaze. Spontaneous nystagmus greater than six degrees per second is even stronger with vision denied at center gaze. So hopefully that helps you understand gaze and spontaneous tests, and I hope you enjoy the new module in ICE.